All right, so the z-axis is now done, and now it's time to focus on the x and xy stuff. All right, first up, we're going to be building the xy joints, and we're going to need some handy-dandy um, heat inserts again. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of these up front. And you're going to need four total. Um, you're going to put them here and here and here and here. Okay, the first thing I do is set these in, and I use, um, there's a little bit of a lip on there that's smaller, that so they just set right in the hole. And I'll take my soldering iron with my heat insert tip and I'll just come in here and gently set them in. Let them heat up just for a second or two and then push them so they're nice and flush. I'm trying to push them down as straight as possible. Those two are done. All right, those are done. Okay, to continue assembly on the XY joints, you're going to need all the parts that you see here along with the ones we just prepared with the heat inserts. You're gonna need the shims, eight bearings, four of the M325 button head screws and four spacers. Okay, for the first piece, you're gonna need two shims, two bearings, oriented like this, and then two more shims on top, as well as the 3D, 3D printed spacer after that. So there's my two shims. There's my spacer. And the other one is in reverse. You're gonna put your spacer down first. Then you'll put on your two shims. And your bearings, two bearings. And then top it off with two shims. And then you should have something that looks like that. You're going to take the piece with the heat inserts and match it up. And then carefully, I'm going to hold it sideways and screw it in. The goal is to not lose any of your stack while you're doing that. Okay. Seems pretty good. And then the last thing you're going to need is an M2 by 10 self tapping screw. And this will go in the very top hole here. And these are Phillips head. Seems to go in there pretty nice and easy. Not too bad. And then the other piece is going to basically be just like this one. And here is the completed stack. And now we're just going to um, put this piece on top. Same procedure as last time. Now both pieces are done and this is what you should have. And now it's time to start the x-axis. To start off the x-axis, you're going to need the last remaining rail that you should have. You're going to need some preloaded nuts, which I've already done. You're going to need the last um, nut insert or nut carrier with, uh, I put five in mine, you can put more. And then you're going to need these uh, rail centering pieces that we used at the very beginning. And then of course you'll also need um, about five or six of the M26 screws. At this point um, you should have your rail centered about 25 millimeters from the side. You also need to preload um, two pre uh, two nut, M3 nuts on either side of the rail. Um, also note that you can't use those T-nuts um, here because the next piece has a little bit of a ridge when you insert it in and it's just not going to sit well right there. Um, and then you're also going to need two um, M3 nuts on the bottom as well. You can use the T-nuts there. Make sure when you're tightening this rail down that you use the centering guides. Okay, a couple tips while you're doing this part. Um, I would recommend just basically skewering from the top to get those T-nuts lined up and then loosely tightening it. And then you may also have to, if you're like me, you might have over tighten this originally. So you may have to loosen these two screws to get it to fit on the extrusion. After you do that, just tighten it up a little bit more.
Okay, you're also gonna need to line up your hex nuts on the bottom. And you can use the T-nuts there. One other tip while I was putting this together, something that I noticed, I'll show you here in a second, is that um, you wanna make sure this plastic piece here is lined up as close as possible to the edge of that extrusion. Otherwise, this may be touching the extrusion and you don't want that to happen. So I just did that on both sides. I may even need to move it over just a tad. It's a good time to check your work and you basically want this, this bearing, these bearings up here um, and you want these bearings down here with this piece here and here, kind of in that orientation. You can also check the side view. That should be on the bottom on this one, and that should be on the top on this one. At this point, we're going to set in the x-axis. One thing that you might have to do is adjust these a little bit so that the screws, or that the uh, plastic parts touch the rails. Um, you're going to be screwing in four M2 by sixes into these little holes here that line up right with the carriages on the rails. I have them both installed. They are a little loose, and that's intentional. Um, before we have one other step where we need to install an end stop um, or the end stop uh, piece but I'm going to push it all the way back and then tighten it as well so that's how you square it otherwise you know if you have something where it's a little off it's not going to print well so just slide them all the way back to the AB drives and then we're going to install the X end stop and then we'll tighten everything down and for the end stop, you're going to need the end stop piece and then two M3 by 16 screws. Okay, now you can see that I've got the X end stop on. Um, this is still fairly loose. These screws are loosened up, so now I can square the gantry. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put <clears throat> put the scoot this all the way to the back, and then I'm just going to go around and tighten basically all of the screws that are going into the extrusion. I'm going to keep my hand you know, with a little bit of pressure on there. Oops. So really it's just this one screw. And then you also have the bottom screws that you're gonna to need to hit. I'm gonna put the pressure in the middle. There's two on the left side. All right, something I discovered the hard way is that um, there's a little opening here and your nuts, T-nuts can definitely come out if your screws are a little loose. So make sure you uh, tighten those down a little bit before you move things around and adjust. After tightening, everything's doing pretty good, and I've got no gap on either side in the back. That's how you know you're nice and square. And you also should have the same amount of distance, a tiny little gap up here. At this point in the build, I'm going to be adding the final two extrusions, which are B extrusions. They're going to be going on the side. So you can see here, I've kind of got them just, oops, got them loosely fitting in, uh, very loosely on that one. But, uh, before we do that, we're gonna to need to put in three nuts on the outside. Uh, we're gonna to need to preload them, three nuts on the outside and two on the inside of both extrusions. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. All right, so as you can see, I've got two preloaded on both the insides and then I've also got uh, three of them preloaded on the outsides. Okay, now at this point after preloading, I'm going to put in some M310s into all the four corners of the extrusion to lock things up and then we'll be ready for the belts. All right, I've got them all bolted in. They're nice and secure. Um, and at that point, the frame is done.